So here I am in uh, Houston, Texas. I just uh, literally flew in uh, with my crew. Um, we're gonna go visit Eric Hughes. Eric Hughes does not know that um, I'm coming here. I came here to surprise him. Um, several years ago, uh, he said that he was gonna throw a party uh, celebrating his fifth year of surviving brain cancer. Uh, on August 5th, it was exactly five years since he discovered that they gave him only six weeks to live. And ever since that time, when I started making videos, uh, short films about brain cancer awareness, uh, I put out a lot of documentation out there, a lot of videos out there, helping people, uh, bringing awareness, um, speaking about different ways, uh, the different things people feel when they have, when they're taking care of someone with brain cancer. And Eric Hughes and his family actually reached out to me several years ago when they first realized he had brain cancer and they gave him six weeks to live. They were super scared. They reached out to me uh, because they didn't know anyone else that knew about uh, brain cancer. They saw my videos and reached out and ever since then, we've remained in contact. And during that time, you know, I made a recommendation as far as like, you know, what they can do and things that they can try and cannabis was one of them. And six weeks turned into six months, six months into a year, and here we are five years later, and Eric is still with us. And Eric always, when he, after about a year or two, he was, he was kicking ass, he, the, the tumor started to shrink. They stopped growing in size, they started to shrink. He said, man, in five years, we're gonna have a party, and I want you to come. And here we are, that's why I'm here. The only thing is, I didn't tell Eric that I was coming, I wanted to completely surprise him. Uh, so me and Amber, his uh, baby mama, his, his lady, uh, we conspired together to, to do this surprise for him. And so that's what we're gonna do now. We're on our way over there. So we'll see you then. Five years ago, probably four and a half years ago, I, I meet uh, Dean, and um, in in hard times, you need like a, a rock, a rope, or um, something to hold on to, something to kind of to either pull you up or, or push you or something like that. And I think that this man has has done that for the people who who are going through brain cancer, and. Uh, I remember at, late at night being, you know, everybody else has gone to bed and I can't sleep and I start to get on the the GBM website and all it is is just bad news and bad news and bad news and bad news and people are just going, you know, like, and just thinking, damn, am I going to be another one of those, those numbers that, that goes down, you know, and uh, Chevy wasn't even here yet and uh, my best friend. All right. I love him. He's amazing. Uh, he's an amazing father, person, human. Like he's just great. I couldn't live life without him. I'm like trying to overdo it. Like cancer. Okay, I get it. I we don't have control, but we do have control over what you do and how you do it. And you're gonna calm down. Oh, he decided he was gonna ride the motorcycle for three hours the other night in the dark. <laughs> I, I text his mom and his dad. I said, this is not okay. Whose idea was this? It was his dad's oh, idea, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, yeah. God <laughs> damn, he was not making prison. No, no. <laughs> oh, <boy. Great> snitching. <laughs> what happened? What happened, baby? We're here, man. We're here. No broken bones. We're good. I was mad. The next day, his dad's like, sorry, I got him in trouble. Yeah. You weren't sorry then, you're sorry the next day after he's done and over with. <laughs> Good. All right. I tell him he's not allowed to die. He's not allowed to die. That's my homie. That's awesome. How long have you known him? Uh, five years. Well, yeah. 
Six years. I met him right before. Right before all this happened? Yeah. And how'd you feel when, when, uh, when you first saw this happening? Devastated. Wow. Devastated. And I didn't even, I didn't know him like I do now. Like, now we're like, clo like really close. I just knew him because I'm best friends with um, Amber. Okay. And so, yeah, I was, I was just devastated. I was devastated for Chevy, too, because I knew, like, because I... We weren't positive. It wasn't a positive situation like it is now. Now, like, I mean, he's good. He's good. Like, he's totally fine. But in the first yeah, year of really me being diagnosed, and whenever I first got diagnosed, I couldn't walk from here to the van by myself. You know what I mean? Like, my, my equilibrium was off. My my body was off, and I was pumping. I don't know how many things of poisoning. You, I mean, you know, and. Uh, that's the other thing about where I'm at is where I am, I can't legally get cannabis. And they just they just now got um, CBD. And uh, for what, what we go through, you need both of them. So, you know, I'm still here. I was on 16 pharmaceutical medicines, six chemo pills, uh, 22 pills pretty much a day and uh, I haven't taken this off and uh, what is that? it's a gray um, brain cancer awareness and it says we stand together yeah. and I haven't yeah. taken this off in five years connected a good bond because we do a lot for uh, Amber and Chevy together so whenever she we know she's busting her ass so right now, Tom laid off, so me and Eric, we try and put in as much as we can to help out, do anything to help her with Chevy. If Chevy needs it, we're there for her. And man, he's came a long way. Freaking five years, that's a long time. They gave him, what, a month or two to live? Man, that motherfucker's oh, solid. Look at that. <laughs> it's solid, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's a solid dude. <laughs> I ain't never met somebody like that. Freaking, he's going strong, man. He found out that he had stopped doing chemo, and that was something that he chose to do, and started utilizing uh, CBD oil, um, different types of uh, you know vapor pens and pills, and also some uh, THC products. So, you know, I was always interested in in and seeing what he was using to to fix that. I've had relatives pass from cancer, so yeah, man. You know, Eric. Eric can contribute his his uh, life to, to CBD and and THC. I, I'm I'm willing to bet that he would tell you the same. You know. Yeah. Oh, it was heartbreaking. Waller. I mean, for for us to have gone through all the things we went through, and you got to remember that we never planned on living this long. <laughs> I mean, that was never a plan to start with. Like, when we joined the Marine Corps, it was like, okay, I got a four-year shelf life, and I'm good. Dude, I, I remember. And then we all made it out, and we got out, and we're like, oh, shit, there's more to life than than what we had planned. And then yeah. out of nowhere, you know, it just comes at you and blindsides you. Wow. I was right. getting home from Afghanistan, and that was going to be my last deployment, right? Mm -hmm. Like. That was supposed to be like the big one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I remember we we did our wheels and stuff before we left. And I went fishing with my dad and I said, I love you. And he said, I love you too. So we get back to like, it wasn't Camp Leatherneck, but it was the, I don't remember the, the, the one that was in between, but I was sitting there and I'm talking to, to Val Morsi mm -hmm. and uh, I'm on my cot and I'm crying, like, not like bawling, but I got like tears in my eyes and my hands are shaking. And he walks by and he goes, Bubba, what's going on? And I said, what the hell do I do now? And he goes, what do you mean? You go home, you have fun. You know? <laughs> like, we <what are> we <laughs> we're on the way home right now. Right? And I was like, no, man. What are we supposed to do after, like, you know? I didn't plan on being right yeah, here. Like, I don't know what, I don't have a plan. Yeah. And then, I mean, and then you get out, you start life over, and then you you get hit with a ton of bricks, you know. And then you have to reevaluate and start everything again, you know. I mean, a whole new way of living, everything. That's my battalion crest for the Marine Corps. It's third LAR, the Wolf Pack. When I first met him, he gave it to me. That's so cool. Yeah, and I kept it right here. 
<laughs> so this is less than a month old. So this is my company, Charlie Company, Comanche Company. And uh, that's 1st Marine Division. And then this is my battalion, 1st uh, LAR. And um, uh, um, Recon, Alexander, he's the one that did this for me uh, less than a month ago. And I wanted to get this done the three here because I have a shirt and on the back of the shirt is this and it's too small and I can't wear it no more. So I said just take it off the shirt and put it on my arm so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> can't outgrow that.